so this didn't happen to me recently. In fact, it was quite some time ago. I was around 9 or 10 years old. I was with my best friend and her parents. We were on our way to the nearest shopping town. We lived in a ruralish area with not many shops and would probably be finished looking in around 10 minutes. So we traveled by train to our nearest town. It was easier, probably cheaper, and definitely quicker. When the train arrived, me and my friend quickly ran on to secure the first table seats. Those ones with four seats and a table in the middle. The train was pretty empty. And with us being kids, we wanted our own table seats and decided to take up the ones on the opposite side of the aisle and left our parents across from us. I noticed a guy a couple rows down in the normal seats on his phone in a really strange position. It looked like he was taking photos of me. This was back in the day where selfies didn't really exist. So it was more than likely that. Or maybe he was using his phone in a ridiculously weird way. Anyway, I pulled the collar of my coat over my face and looked the other way as I shrunk into my seat. I didn't mention anything because, to be honest, I thought I was being outrageous. A couple minutes later, a lady who I remember as being tall, slim, and blonde with a wavy bob and glasses went over to my mom. She crouched down next to her and spoke very quietly and softly. I couldn't really hear her well enough to know what she was saying. My mom's face told the whole story. My mom asked me to come sit with her and my friend's mom, and the lady went to the conductor of the train. When we got to the next station, there were groups of police officers and security waiting on the platform. The train pulled up, and the weird guy was taken away. We heard that he did in fact take photos of me, and they found hundreds and thousands of photos of other children on his phone and computer. They didn't go into details, but I didn't ride on that train for a very, very long time after. Worst thing is, I'm sure I saw him walking past my house a week later. I know a lot of people are going to think this is fake, but I swear, it's not. I've got my best friend as a witness. This happened a few years ago when I was about 13. I'm 5 foot 7, on about 125 pounds, so I'm pretty small. But I usually have pepper spray and a pocket knife on me. I'm embarrassed to say though, in my excitement of exploration with my best friends, I forgot my pepper spray and knife. I love to explore and travel even or especially in places I'm not allowed. So when I moved in, of course, one of the first places I explored was the train tracks. So I had my best friend come over to play one day to explore the neighborhood with me. And we decided the train tracks was a perfect place to explore. We were walking for about an hour or two, but it was still light out and we had just passed a small neighborhood street, so we felt safe. But when I turned around to throw a stick, I saw five hooded figures following us from about 200 feet. I tried to pretend like I didn't see them, and told my best friend to stay calm. We decided to look at them straight on, and see what they would do. Once we looked at them, they stopped. So did my friend and I, we stared at each other for a few seconds, but it felt like hours. Finally, they made their move. Three of them went left, two of them went right. We heard the sound of loud and fast footsteps, so we finally snapped out of our trance and ran as fast as we could. 
We were both in the cross country, and we were being held together by adrenaline so we could run faster than we ever had before. But luckily, because I explored on those same train tracks a few days ago, I knew if we ran half a mile more, we would be on the bridge above another small neighborhood. We somehow made it. No clue if we were still being followed or not. But out of fear, we jumped 10 feet down and kept running deep into the neighborhood until we finally saw people again. Then, we slowly walked home, shaking and absolutely exhausted. Looking back now, I regret not telling my parents, but I was so scared they wouldn't let me explore alone anymore. But I didn't go on those train tracks, ever, again, and I never will. I guess I'll start by saying this happened maybe four or five years ago, when I was either a sophomore or a junior in high school. My best friend at the time was invited to her friend's birthday party and invited me as her plus one. We got all doled up and got ready to go. At some point during the party, around 9 or 10 p.m., we had the brilliant idea to leave and go catch the train downtown. We started the trek to the nearest train station, and since neither of us drove, we were literal kids in heels. We can't walk in, and we're in a sketchy part of Chicago. We decided to flag down a cab to get us there. When we get there, we failed to realize there was actually a building you can wait in which would have been far more safer. So we climb up what I can remember to be like three flights of old wooden stairs and wait for the train to arrive. I want to point out that while the platform was elevated, people driving past were able to see everything up there and there were two cases of stairs on each side of the platform. After about five or ten minutes of waiting, we see all the way on the other side, a man in black, hood up, and everything. My friend and I are completely sketched out, and tr trying not to look, but we decide to stay because he wasn't bothering us. I peek to my side, and I realize that instead of facing the train tracks, his body, his position are away, and he's steering directly at us. I, I whisper at my friend to start walking down the stairs because at this point I realize we might be in a sticky situation. The platform was long and while we were far from him, we were also far from outside of the stairs as well. As we're walking, I look back and see him now walking towards us and we flip out. We're now trying to run, but we're so slow because we're in five inch heels. I look back once more while running and see he's now running after us also. Miraculously, we make it to the bottom and while we're still running to the streets, there's a red sedan just stopped in the middle of the street, window down, looking straight at us. Before we even say anything, he says something along the lines of, girls, you okay? Get in the car, I'll help you. I guess my friend was panicking and she opens the door to get in, but before her butt lands on the seat, I pull her away because we learned in kindergarten not to get into strangers' cars. I tell him, I'm on the phone with 911. Can you wait here with us until they come? Before I even blink, his windows roll down and he speeds off. We run to the nearest restaurant and wait to get picked up. No man ever came down from those stairs and I hung up on 911 before someone even answered. I try to think rationally about the situation. Maybe the guy was just trying to scare us. And maybe that man in the red sedan was just trying to help, but something in the back of my head makes me think maybe it was a plot, a scheme to get us into his car. Either way, man at the train station, man in the red sedan, please. This happened to me when I was in Europe, when I was still a student, living in France. I went to see my friend Jay, 
in the suburbs and wanted to take the last train home to the city where I lived. It was past 11 p.m., but I do not remember the exact time. He dropped me off in front of a train station in his green estate car and left. Nothing unusual. On the platform, I was told by a couple of teenagers that the trains had been cancelled due to a suicide on the line. This was confirmed by the announcement screen on the platform. The station was unmanned at the time of the night. Being a student, a taxi was definitely out of the question. So I called Jay to ask him if he could come back and drive me home. He said he would only be a few minutes, as he was only around the corner. A few minutes pass, and a green estate car arrives and parks in front of the station. I don't hesitate. I open the passenger door and climb in. And as I do, I sit down. I'm completely puzzled. Why does Jay have a little plastic bag filled with leaves on the dashboard? They weren't there earlier. Why does he have a machete stuck between the passenger seat and his seat? I look up at him to ask him these questions and... Why is this guy not my friend? And, and why is he staring at me like that? I snap out of it. Uh, I think I have the wrong car. I think you do. My friend is just around the corner. He's coming to pick me up. You have the same car. He locks the door. Thankfully, Jay arrives at that point, passes us, parks the car, and gets out of his car. Jay is big. He does boxing, and the guy next to me sees that. The doors click open. I bolt out of the car, run to Jay, and shout at him to get in the car and drive. He doesn't ask questions, and we drive off. Once I had calmed down, he told me he had got out of his car because he could see a bunch of youngsters approaching the exit of the station, and they had baseball bats. He was wondering if I was in any kind of trouble. Jay thinks the guy locked me in the car to protect me from the young guys. I'm not so sure about that myself. I'm glad he came back when he did, so I never had to find out.